full people here today. So I think before we get started, uh, well, I guess I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, the committee would like to welcome the audience and viewers may watch live board committee meetings online at tcaps.net slash board. Recorded meetings may be viewed on demand at the same address. Um, let's just go around the room and just introduce who's here this morning. And uh, we'll start with Ginger on the end. Sure. Ginger Smith, and I'm the Executive Director of Communications and Marketing. Stacey O'Donnell, I'm the Director at Traverse City, Northwest Michigan Health Services, Traverse City for TCAPS as well. Heidi Britton, CEO at Northwest Michigan Health Services. I'm Emily Spica, I'm the Executive Assistant to our Chief Academic Officer, Secondary, Jesse Holton. And I'm Kelly Walter, Executive Assistant to Dan Tysworth, Chief Academic Officer, Elementary. And I'm Dan Tysworth. Flanoy <laughs> 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 Humphreys, Vice President of the TCAP School Board. Erica Moon Moore, uh, Trustee and uh, Chair of the Curriculum Committee meeting. Just Beth Pack, Trustee. John Ben Wagner, just Superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> Good match. Good match. <laughs> Jesse Houghton, Chief Academic Officer for Secondary. Brittany Kay, Director of Curriculum and Instruction. I'm Allie Sullivan. I'm an Instructional Coach at East Middle School and the Secondary Social Studies Curriculum Specialist. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, do Dan, do you want to go ahead and introduce Brittany? And, uh, yeah, so just some jump, yeah. introductions. We do want to introduce uh, Brittany Kay. She just introduced herself. A mm -hmm. new TCAPS uh, Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Been now on the job for probably five or six weeks, mm -hmm. came to us from uh, North Ed, worked very closely with TCAPS um, in ELA as far as uh, providing support for instruction at the elementary uh, level. So right now, kind of right off the get-go as far as helping us out with not only ELA, but, but all things curriculum, and especially as we start that um, transition with our CKL, CKLA curriculum. Great. So Great. welcome. And welcome. Welcome. Happy to be here. So good. Uh, well, excellent. We'll move into uh, public comment. Uh, do we have any public comment? No. Okay, we'll move right along. Um, so first pr procedural item, uh, we are at the draft meeting minutes portion of the agenda. Are there any changes to the uh, draft meeting minutes? Hearing no changes, the minutes will remain as posted. Um, next item is the 2024-2025 TCAPS District Course Catalog, and I will defer to Ms. Houghton. Yeah, you'll see just a few courses here that we added, uh, a few NMC courses that our dual enrollment students are taking, um, and you'll see a few online courses that our students are adding to some Michigan virtual courses there. And then maybe the most unique change that I want to point out is we are running a new AP course at both of our high schools. It's an AP seminar course. It's in our English department. Um, the students in the STEM cohort who are 10th graders, that will be their English component. Um, and so we are tagging that as AP seminar and then in parentheses, um, honors ELA 10. Uh, we, heard, we talked to a few colleges just to make sure on tr students' transcripts that would be read correctly, and they recommended for right now to put that honors English designation on there for our students so that um, those that are going on to post-secondary colleges know how to tag that course. AP Seminar is a newer course that College Board has rolled out, and it's, it's a really cool course that has students um, putting together research and um, synthesizing ideas, and so more to come on that, but um, that was a new course that's running at both of our high schools in person. Hmm. That was the course that was taught last year with, is it um, Mr. Fortin? It's, it, it's in running in that cohort. This is the first year we've taught this course. Yep. Last year we just kind of, in, we had that cohort running that Mr. Fortin was in at Central. Um, and this year we are actually running it as a course. Uh, we know that the research the students are learning will align strongly with this okay. course. Okay. Yep. So it, yep. it really takes it much more into a writing seminar yep. than, yes. than a science seminar. They're using some science curriculum for that writing and, and research component, yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's great, great, <clears throat> great addition. <clears throat> uh, any other questions? Okay, we will move on to field trip re requests. Yes, yeah, so some field trip requests here uh, are middle schools. They have traditionally taken students uh, to Washington, D.C., so you see both of those on here. Um, and then we have some international uh, trips that we have scheduled to uh, through West Senior High teachers, so those are on here as well. 
Yeah, they, oh, the Galapagos sounds amazing. <laughs> I don't know if they're looking for chaperones, but I, I know. Can ask. I know my kids will be gone, graduated by then. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I could come back and be a chaperone. It'd be great. Uh, anyway, th those look fantastic, and um, yeah, we will um, read through all those. Do you guys have any questions on those? Nope. Okay. Well, one, and it's a dumb question, but why is isn't it? West is like twenty two hundred dollars estimate, and the other one's like a little under nineteen hundred or for something. For the uh, for the Washington D.C. Yeah, it's plane yeah. tickets. It's the right now the dates in which the advisors are looking to purchase plane. They're going to try to keep them as close to right around that two thousand dollar mark. Um, but right now it's just it's just April versus May and plane ticket prices. Okay. Yeah. I, was thinking, oh. I know. I know. <laughs> Yeah, that's Good question. Great. Yeah. Um, just as a little side note, yesterday was uh, Travers Heights had their move-a-thon, and so I went and volunteered there, and they raised, I want to say, close to ten thousand dollars for their PTO, um, <clears throat> and a lot of that money will be used for field trips and things for those okay. kids or s sports or whatever the PTO decides. But I thought that was, it's really cool, really cool to see. I think it was the most. Think it was the most that they raised uh, on a move-a-thon, so they did a great job. So, um, awesome. yeah, there was a, a mom <clears throat> that has spearheaded that um, year after year after year. So, really, really great work. So, anyway, little side note there. Uh, all right. So, and we'll move those field trips on to the uh, full committee for, I mean, full uh, board for approval. Um, okay, moving on to informational items. Uh, first item is uh, board curriculum learning series. So, uh, Jesse and Dan. Sure, we want to take some time to highlight two in days that are in our instructional calendar in which it's it's primarily led by our social studies committee, which is why we brought Allie here. Um, two different days, one's already passed in September, Constitution Day, one that's new um, coming up, our Indigenous Peoples Day, that's on October 14th. And what are we doing instructionally around those days to to educate our kids with, with that in mind? So we're going to start with Constitution Day. Um, and I, I will tell you, as I talked to some of our secondary social studies teachers, they kind of smiled at me and said, you, you do know the Constitution is like the backbone for most of our curriculum throughout the whole year. So although we do emphasize it on September 17th, um, it is something that we use throughout the year to educate kids and, and draw um, connections to. But I will kind of pass this to Allie and let her comment on the work they've done with Constitution Day. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. So all teachers, um, K or JK 12, um, on this day or close as close to this day as possible, um, do something to highlight the constitution. And again, because it's so early in the school year, there's a lot of curriculum where it's like, oh, well, the constitution is something that we talk about <laughs> in a couple of months. They do all kinds of, um, different things from, um, memorizing different hands signals that represent um, the Bill of Rights, the First Ten Amendments, uh, to little songs, um, an elementary, it looks like grade level bands do a variety of different activities um, all around um, just constitutional thinking and awareness. Um, and then at the secondary sites, each teacher submits a description of the activity that they do in the classroom. Some teachers do something different every year, make it new. Some teachers have their tried and true um, go-tos. And so in this way, at the end of the day on September 17th, every TCAPS kid has some sort of new or reestablished learning about the Constitution and what it is. And again, this is not new for us in TCAPS. We've right. always made sure that we uh, focused on the Constitution on this day in particular. Uh, we just thought we would kind of highlight it again for the board and remind the public that this is something that we intentionally engage our kids in every fall. Also a great opportunity to highlight social studies and social studies curriculum. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the data we go through as a building when we do data reviews uh, involves language arts and math. There's even part of the NWA that's uh, science. And as far as social studies go, it kind of seems to fall by the wayside a little bit in elementary. Mm -hmm. So this is a way that we can, this and Indigenous Peoples Day is a great opportunity for our social studies department to kind of uh, connect, make some other connections to other curriculum and kind of highlight it to start to kick the year off. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think that's good. Yeah. I really do. 
Okay, so then we'll move into, now this is a little, this is newer for us this year, it's the Indigenous Peoples Day. We have a half day of school running on this day, it's on Monday. The afternoon, our staff will stay all day for some professional learning, but our students will be in session for a half day. Um, we also have one other guest with us too. Dan, do you want to introduce Yes, I uh, introduce Summer Baldwin. Um, she uh, leads our uh, Indigenous Education Program and uh, helped our um, Social Studies Department put our lessons together for Indigenous Peoples Day. So welcome, Summer. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So JK Lessons, um, when, when we got together as a social studies department, we kind of started to brainstorm what's the best way to, to tackle this, um, make sure that we were accurate in our learning, uh, and then everybody kind of got the same message. So we decided to break it up into two chunks. We did a JK2 lesson and a 3-5 lesson. Uh, just shout out to our um, elementary social studies team, uh, Sam Walter, uh, Liz Berger, uh, Michelle Charlin, Beth Myers, and then Allison Sullivan obviously was, was part of it, and Summer, as we got together, we spent a couple of uh, half days uh, going through options for lessons, uh, betting through some books and some readings, and then trying to build some activities around those around those readings. Really nice, just landed on a half day, kind of give that half day some value. I know sometimes it's tough in those three hours for uh, to kind of have that learning experience with people still moving through all their specials and all their days. So to have a concentration on that half day kind of highlights one item and, and does uh, help us build some learning around it. So some of you and Allie maybe just kind of summarize our JK2 and our, our 3-5. Yeah, sure. Uh, good morning. I'm in Adesia. Uh, so for JK through two, we are doing a book titled Rock Your Mocks, which will be a read aloud by their teacher in JK through uh, two. And the uh, activity that will accompany it is the students will design a pair of moccasins, but um, it'll be based on questions saying, you know, what do you observe in your surroundings? Because generally that's what would um, influence designs in moccasins, but also emphasize walking together in community. Um, for the JK through five, or excuse me, two. And then the We Are Water Protectors is for three through five. Um, both of these books are authored by indigenous authors, and um, this one is a Caldecott um, Award recipient, um, but it accompanies with us an activity as well, and an ode to take care of our water and keep our waters clean um, for this generation and beyond. And um, <coughs> the this one, let's see, what was I gonna say? This one, actually, all of our lesson plans included do have embedded into the presentations the Anishinaabe Moen, which means Anishinaabe language, into some of the presentations. So the teachers have that option to click the audio and to hear how some of the words are said in, in the presentations. There's teacher notes that accompany our slideshows in the J through, JK through five. That's great. <clears throat> Okay, middle school. Yeah, um, I'm going to definitely turn this over to Ellie Sullivan. Her and Dustin Worm. Dustin Worm is our instructional coach at West Middle School. They're both incredible facilitators and incredible teacher leaders, but they have done just a really great job with our middle school lessons. So, Ellie, if you want to talk a little bit about So, last spring, um, middle school principals started to, or once the calendar was set, started to think about um, what this day in the fall was going to look like. So, Dustin and I um, kind of took that on last spring and decided that we wanted all core teachers to dedicate their class period on this half day towards Indigenous Peoples Day. And so a lot of our conversations with Summer were about, okay, there's so much information, how do we want to start? And we balanced the, you know, it's 28 minute classes, it's only going to be you know, shallow learning, <laughs> um, but that's where we need to start. So every student in, at East and West Middle School will go through their normal schedule, but in their math, science, social studies, and ELA courses, um, their teachers are going to present to them um, a lesson based on kind of Indigenous People 101. What are the basic understandings that we want kids to have from this day with elective teachers having some options um, for that day. So today, actually after school, um, Dustin, Summer, and I are going to be doing um, some PD for teachers, so they have a base understanding. Um, so before they put this information in front of students, they 
know um, the history better, they're more comfortable pronouncing words, uh, and, and the lessons are grab and go ready to go. We also have embedded in there um, some did you know facts um, from local indigenous community members, um, including Holly Bird, um, did a really nice video for us. And so at the end of the day, on um, the 14th, all middle school students will have um, several blocks of knowledge compared to what they knew the day before. Will it, will it be organized to where like the math teachers will be covering as yeah. the certain? So, yeah, the, the, um, the English will be doing so that they're not. Absolutely. There's no overlap, repeating. but there are complements um, to the learning. So um, the math, um, they're playing this um, strategy game from um, the Southwest Indigenous in ELA, they're going to be tasting strawberry preserves, which we got locally from Food for Thought. Um, in social studies, we're going to be doing some map analysis and talking about preferred language. And in science, um, students are going to be learning about monomen, which is wild rice. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I got a grant at the beginning of the school year to buy all of the supplies for all of that. And so now it's just the logistics of, you know, does everybody have the materials that they need? So that's on the way. We're really excited um, and we wanted it to be um, straightforward, simple, and really successful to then learn and grow for um, MLK Junior Day, which will do the same sort of format um, in January. I have a couple questions. Michigan, when do we do Michigan history? Fourth, no. Um, Third grade. Third grade. Third grade is primarily grade? Michigan history. Are there special, is it embedded throughout the whole yes. Michigan? Yes. I, I would hope. Yeah. And then you know, also in, you know, in secondary social studies, uh, in every single year, there are standards, state standards that align to the stories of local history, the stories of you know, indigenous community. And then <clears throat> this summer I was up at um, St. Ignace and went to the museum that I think was Odawa um, Ojibwa. Uh, and it was really good, but it also looked like they had what could be a traveling exhibit from there that um, they had all their displays on the wall that were permanently uh, fixed. But then there were also like banners, you know, those roll up kind of mm -hmm. banners. And it looked like it, it duplicated the information. And I was wondering if even in time, it would be interesting to contact them and see if that is a traveling exhibit. It, and it was, it was good. It was through time. It wasn't just um, old or um, 1700s, but it just kind of went through the history and, and talked about how things had changed. Um, and I thought it was really good. I learned a lot, actually, going through it. Yeah, I'll look into that. That sounds great. And I think That's our elementary, cool. if I remember, <clears throat> our elementary schools took a field trip up to our, up to the Grand Traverse um, Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians to the museum there um, and spent the day there. Where is that one? Is uh, that the same one? No, no, no. Ages? In in between Leland and in, in Shawnee in Town. Uh huh. Town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think don't. My kids went to that when they were when they were in elementary school. They had a, a day field trip up there. So that would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great museum. Because they talked about the contribution to the World Wars. They talked about the French. And Native American relationship. They talked about how a lot of tribes didn't like each other. Um, <clears throat> so all of that was really interesting. Yeah, and the, uh, the lessons were developed with um, that sort of culturally responsible information in mind that, um, you know, the story of indigenous people is not just one of the past, um, mm -hmm. that there's modern contributions. And if we only learn about indigenous history, when colonialism started, then we don't understand, you know, what was lost uh, and what was um, true and, um, and and real before that happened. Well, if both begin to understand and appreciate the other, then I think that is really a benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Baby steps, but it's a good 
good first step. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I'll let Eileen talk about high school here in a second. Um, I th we've done a really nice job as a district, mainly through Summer and Alley, working with our local tribes and really thinking about what is appropriate for our students and what that learning should look like mm -hmm. that really um, honors that culture and that, and that um, traditions. We've also done a nice job preparing and supporting our teachers, too. Uh, Allie brought in some professional learning during that August PD for all of our social studies secondary teachers. Uh, we had Erin Bird in. Erin Chivas. Erin Chivas, excuse me. Um, in uh, to talk with our teachers for about 90 minutes or so and do some education with all of our so secondary social studies teachers. And then they're, after they create the lesson, they are carving out, like uh, Allie said, time here at the staff meeting for staff to go through and like process it and have some conversations. Um, which will help them do a nice job delivering that instruction too because this is new um, for our social studies teachers and for our middle school teachers so we wanted to make sure we supported them with that too because most of us teachers in our own k-12 education um, are we're missing that information ourselves and unless we go seek that out um, we kind of uh, wander through it a little uninformed <laughs> um, so in high school um, 912 this year, we decided that just social studies were going to um, deliver this lesson. So all social studies teachers on Monday the 14th will be delivering um, a social studies uh, lesson that was um, created for them. That was, again, sort of basic understanding. They're going to get um, some map analysis, some preferred uh, language learning, a uh, little bit of history, and then um, dotted through are some um, informational videos, and you can see Holly there. Uh, <clears throat> That's great. That's great. Um, just to clarify, too, this this is I know this is new, but this will be moving forward standard. It's our plan. I mean, we have to negotiate calendar always with the TCEA. And, okay. You know, but I think that's, um, you know, my my belief is the intent and will of the board. Yeah. You know, from that aspect. So, you know, following our strategic plan, that is what we will plan on bring, bringing forth and working with our calendar on that. that element. Okay. I've just gotten commu um, mem community members that have asked, like, you know, is this like a one-time thing or yeah. is this going to continue? You know where we will mm -hmm. know this on our calendar and to be able to that's our plan grow the curriculum yeah. and okay that's our plan okay and for <clears throat> excuse me and for MLK Day as well correct and so we'll do the same thing when we get closer from that standpoint you know um, as well but as you all know we have to negotiate calendar what all that looks like and how that goes so um, we're gonna walk into it but that's our goal and intent for sure. So just a side note, talking about things you don't know as, as seasoned teachers, I grew up in the South, and the textbooks in the South didn't even have the UP uh, as part of Michigan. So I didn't even know there was a UP until I moved to Michigan. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Was that before How you were traded in Michigan? Was that before? UP wasn't there anymore. Oh, thanks, Dan. <laughs> was, no, that was before the Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> wow. Well, I remember when that last Wow, 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 wow. No, it was definitely an over, oversight on the educational process in Arkansas. There you go. Wow. Well, Dan and Jesse, thanks so much for bringing both of you to our meeting today and just really appreciate the work that you're doing to... Uh, incorporate this into our curriculum and, and have it be a standard um, part of our curriculum. And, and I love the, the thoughtfulness of all the way from JK all the way um, through high school and um, how and where you're going to incorporate it, I think, I think is great. So, um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for being here, too. So, mm -hmm. truly. Uh, any other questions? No? Thank you. Okay, um, let's see, where are we? So next item is the Student's Health Center update. So um, I will go ahead and leave that out just who, so, so, so as you all know. I'm just going to be a smooth transition all. I'm like writing down notes thinking, oh my God. I feel like I'm a little, not supposed to 
supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, Heidi. Was, it's okay. <laughs> but uh, th this is an opportunity, as you all know, uh, a year, a little over a year ago, we started on this journey of um, uh, opening a student health center uh, at West Middle School. And so really, uh, at least two years, just kind of in the beginning, maybe even a little longer when we first met, just, you know, talking about this idea and the grant. And then a construction phase that took us, you know, a while. But, um, you know, taking the old curriculum slash art building uh, that was behind West Middle School and taking a part of that and making a health clinic. Um, it's been an awesome experience to be able to, you know, see come to fruition and um, having, again, uh, both uh, physical health and some mental health supports as well there. Um, it turned out awesome. Uh, been a great partnership. Um, and so one of the things that when I was met with uh, Josie Ballinger, one of our board members, she had asked, you know, for an update kind of of interested of, you know, what's been going on with it and, and thoughts. And so that's where I uh, asked Ginger to, to work with Heidi to um, have a presentation. And so um, we were able to, this is, we, we kind of debated between um, curriculum and uh, executive and, and the date worked really well for them to be able to come here. And so um, our intent is to give a committee, and then if the committee feels that um, it might be good for the board to hear, I would like that feedback for the agenda if that's uh, the thought. Um, but with that, I'll go ahead and pass it off to Heidi to talk about our health <clears throat> Okay, <planning>. thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was writing notes. I'm like, wow, this is fascinating. I love, as a parent, hearing what is happening, which is um, Really, it's, it's inspiring and, and lovely. And I was thinking, how does a health center, like how do we transition it? Um, and I, I think I would take it from curriculum and instruction. It's all about empowering our students and knowing how to advocate for their own health care. Because especially our, our middle schoolers have the greatest opportunity to learn how to access a health care system that's pretty safe, lots of consents, a lot of protections, and yet they can figure out how to get there on their own, make their own appointments, and start using a system that most people don't know how to utilize. Um, and it's empowering, right? So we're empowering even our high school students to be able to get over there on their own, make their own appointments, and um, just get ready for their next level after leaving TCAP. So that was my bridge. I, it might be a stretch, but I do definitely believe in that whole empowerment and advocating for your own health care when sometimes you don't have it at home or sometimes you just, they got to grow up, right? I think they grow up, right? I have a couple of boys, senior and sophomore, they grow up, right? <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. You have okay. 10 more years. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I, uh, just a little bit about Northwest, just to continue to um, anchor us. We are from 1968, over 50 years old. We've provided quality health care throughout a wide range of health services in our communities, and we really value the dignity and compassion that we serve with. Um, if you're familiar, we our main Traverse City Clinic is located over on 72, over by um, Tom's West Bay. It's a, it used to be a different color building. Now it's blue since, I don't know, 2016. Um, and in that building, we provide medical, dental, and behavioral health services. Um, in that building, we've expanded to now having almost 10 dental operatories. We have three full-time dentists, a couple hygienists, all full-time, all employees of ours. On our medical side, we have anywhere between three and four medical providers, uh, physicians, as well as nurse practitioners. And on the behavioral health side, we have about three therapists currently that are all licensed um, social workers. Um, so it's a pretty full, comprehensive um, list of services that we offer. One waiting room, remove all those stigmas. You don't really know why you're there. Um, and people just come out of a door and call your name, right? So it's, it's nice to remove those um, barriers. So our history together with TCAPS, uh, oh, let me just also say, before I get there, uh, just since I'm going into Northwest, so we have our Traverse City Clinic, but we also have one in Benzie, Manistee, and in Shelby. Additionally, the model that we have at West Middle School, we have located also at Manistee Area Public Schools in their middle high school. 
Um, and then also Mason Central, we have um, behavior health only in their school as well. So this was our third site that we had opened up in a school. Um, about April 2022, uh, we came together. We met as a great team of members to discuss this idea of having a child and adolescent um, health center here um, at TCAPS through the leadership of both um, Dr. Van Wagner and Ginger. This really came to fruition with the full board support. Fall of 22, we were then awarded a grant through the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services for about 180,000 to build and operate um, the Child and Adolescent Health Center at West Middle School. And then in January of 2024, we, we opened it. It took more than 180,000 if you were following. We received a few other grants to support some ARPA funds as well. Um, so we really wanna thank our community for supporting. And then there was definitely some generosity given from TCAPS um, in lots of different levels to start living in a building that's not ours. <laughs> Um, at any time, anyone wants to just ask a question, feel free. And I will have us out by noon, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we continue to commitment to our well-being, to your well-being, to the child's well-being. Um, you can read it, what our goal is up there um, to, you know, provide primary care and preventative health services, including well care, diagnosing and treatment for both acute and chronic illnesses. So we provide both the physical and the mental health at the TCAPS West Middle School. So we have a, a physician's assistant there as well as a therapist there, which we'll get into in just a moment. I also wanted just to share that what the state of Michigan requires for child, child and adolescent health centers, which I tend to call school-based <coughs> health centers. They're kind of interchangeable. So if you hear me flip-flop it, it's pretty normal. I worked in Illinois forever before I moved to Michigan, and they were always called school-based health centers. And in Michigan, they call them, they call them child and adolescent health centers. So sometimes they're, they're interchangeable. Um, it is our requirement to receive the grant from Michigan Department of Health, Health and Human Services that we serve at least 200 students annually, that we take care of students 3 to 21, um, that we designate teen-only hours. Uh, we operate year-round and at one location. So when everyone is on Christmas break, we're, we tend to be open. A little lonely at times, but we are open. Um, we provide a minimum of 24 hours of behavioral health services. Actually, that's um, we do 40. So we only have to do 24, but we've opened it up in um, uh, honor the 40. And we have 24 hours of medical care services. That is very true. Um, and there can, they are three consistent days, consecutive days, and they always overlap with our behavioral health therapist as well. So they're always um, 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 not interplaying, but they're um, integrated okay. with each other. Um, we have youth input through our community and our youth advisory committees, um, and we've activated a community advisory committee that meets twice a year. Partnership between NMHSI and TCAPS, it's kind of a long list of greatness. I think um, the school works together with our health centers to identify the needs of our student population. We saw this over and over again since January. Um, we would get phone calls from the school saying, I have a new family, or there's definitely a family in need. Can they be seen? Can they be seen now? We have a sports physical. Can they be seen now? We're always a yes. We try to be more yes than anything else. <coughs> the school is a partner with us and helps address community health care needs and social determinants of health. We, um, we review everyone's social determinants of health when they come through our doors because a lot of times um, we're meeting needs beyond just their physical or their mental well-being. Um, this partnership is built on mutual respect and collaboration between the school and the provider to promote health and educational success. Um, that is true all day long with Kristen and the rest of the team at West Middle School. That's our biggest collaborator, just being in her backyard, um, and that's been, it's just been lovely. Um, understand and respect accountability with educational systems. So that's on our part. So we do a lot of education just on our end of, of our team to understand um, a pretty foreign system to us, um, education. Um, so we do some work around that. We try to integrate as much as we can. Um, we have a shared vision. We communicate those through our teacher support staff and students. We build some collaboration, mutually respect relationships, and on. Uh, this is what our foundation is that puts us together. 
We do have uh, flexible scheduling. Um, they can book an appointment during or after school hours. They can just stop by the health center. They can call. Um, and this year-round accountability, which I already um, kind of shared that. And you might ask, like, how much does it cost to go there? Um, we um, do bill insurances. So um, any whether it's Medicaid or whether it's a private insurance, we bill for that. Um, we also have a sliding fee scale. So for families that don't have Medicaid or private insurance, they can um, fill out an income, um, income form to find out where they fit into our slides. So 200% or below the federal poverty level is a $20 medical visit. I always say we never shake down our fifth graders or second graders, right? If they're coming in, we're seeing them, and I don't know, often I'm not sure if a bill ever goes out, quite frankly. It's not the purpose. Um, we figure out how to sustain ourselves in other ways. No matter what, everyone is welcome. Open house, just to celebrate it once again, January 2024 it was a really fun day, I thought, and it wasn't too crazy cold, and it was just lovely. Um, it was a great day. We opened it up. Um, again, if you're not familiar, we're in that curriculum. Ah, that was the connection. We're in the old curriculum building. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're there now. <laughs> That's a really great space. Um, and uh, we, I don't know, I think I have some photos of the inside of it too. This is our staff that are there. So Hannah Wilson is our physician's assistant. She's our medical provider. Erica Spalding is our behavioral health therapist, and then Kaylee is our community health worker that works with all of our students. Medical services, um, it, it's a regular medical office, right? Physicals, well-child <laughs> visits, treatments for chronic illnesses, injuries, um, vision hearing screenings, immunizations, lab services, asthma, you name it, we can do it. Hannah's pretty fantastic. She really just loves this work. Um, you could probably attest to that too. Stacy is the clinic director. Um, she just, she used to work in our Benzonia clinic and when we knew that we were gonna open up the TCAPS one, we offered it to her. She lives out in Kingsley on a strawberry farm and she was like, yes, please. She just loves adolescent health and loves that age group. So she's a really great fit for us. We have two medical exam rooms, um, one has a, purple wall, one has a green wall. Um, there's our behavioral health room. Again, assess, diagnose, therapy, crisis intervention, risk assessments. It's mostly mild to moderate. Um, anything beyond that, we have other sort of resources to help that family move forward, but oftentimes there's nowhere else to move the family to. So um, we're just navigating that and um, providing as much care as we can. Um, and then we have patient support services, so really helping our families get um, access to Medicaid, health insurance enrollment, um, connecting them to community resources, health education, interpretation as needed. Like I said, we had a couple of Spanish-speaking families that came, and um, we have lots of translators um, and bilingual folks over in the Traverse City Clinic, so bringing them. Actually, our receptionist is bilingual as well. Um, but we also, as I'm sure you have noticed, we have a pretty large... A Ukrainian population and we take care of a lot of the Ukrainian population also at our clinics and so that's kind of a nice um, bridge so we can take care of their kiddos at the clinic and then we tend to take care of their parents and families back over at the uh, at our main site over on 72. So a little bit of data um, kicking off again in January. Um, we've seen a, we have 185 unduplicated users. So 185 students have utilized our system. 88 are female, 97 are male. I thought that was pretty fantastic. It usually is like higher female than male, but I think this is great. Um, and then you can see the age breakdown. What I think is good about this, um, definitely our 10 to 17 year olds are using it the most, which is what I would expect. We have our high schoolers that can drive. We have our middle schoolers that can walk. Um, I haven't figured out how to get the East Middle School kiddos over or the Central yet, but um, I, I think some point maybe we'll figure that out. Um, but that's, I think it's a good breath. I also think I'd like to see more of the five through nine but it's hard to get those elementary kiddos there or their families. So we definitely have some challenges and barriers that we need to work through. What we do have that you'll see in the total visits, we've had 658 visits, 134 
medical, 501, behavioral health, and 23 telehealth. <coughs> so even if we can have an elementary kid at a school do telemedicine, that's a, that's a win all day long, right? So they can do either behavioral health via telemedicine, or they can do a physical health do via telemedicine, especially if it's um, like an earache or a sore throat or whatever, like, yeah, you're out or in or whatever, right? So we're pretty capable of doing that and pretty flexible. Um, that will be interesting to see in the up this year if that number changes or how our system is utilized. Um, so um, I'm going to let you talk, Stacy, a little bit about this a uh, couple slides. So just oh, quick answer. question. Can yes, yeah. a couple of questions. Oh, yeah. um, one of them is: Are a lot of those the male visits are they sports related? Are you doing sports physicals here? We do, but I wouldn't. You say don't that think that's that that's necessarily what upper it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then with the pertussis mm -hmm. that's coming up, are you doing any outreach, any kind of programs on that? No, pretty Nothing much just, specifically. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the health department. I the understand. One that we, you know, worked with on that of those cases. But that, because you're so close, yeah. I'm I mean, just we have vaccines sitting around, and we have degree. We're ready yeah. to speak to that. Yeah, we're ready to, you know, on count. We have vaccines on site. We have the ability to, you know, educate to on the spreading and all that um, aspect, and then work along with the health department um, for the education sure. for the school wide. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, compared to your other sites, and I know this is, you know, it's only been open, you know, just just a, not even a year yet. Um, but uh, number of kids, number of treatments. How mm -hmm. how does it compare to some of the other sites? So our Manistee school typically sees two hundred unduplicated mm -hmm. as well. I think this is promising that we are we are almost at two hundred, and we haven't even been open a year. Um, I think it's going along swimmingly well. I would love to see more visits. I would love to see more families. It is, and, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about, the education piece or the getting the word out piece. Mm -hmm. Even, like, personally to my friends, it's like, yeah, it don't go to urgent care. Come here. Just sign the consents and send your kiddo, right? Um, it, it's, it's really kind of foreign, right? And going back to how to advocate for your own health care, how to empower our students to go and explore it. Um, we talk a little bit, uh, I think you'll talk about like lunch buddies. Again, in the West Middle School, just really trying to make those connections. Um, so I think, I think we have only up to go. Um, mm -hmm. And I think we're doing well for, for the first year. We tend to see behavioral health always higher than medical, right? Medical, you're only going in if you need it. Mm -hmm. But we're about to hit flu season and and you figure we started in late january of last year so it'll be interesting <coughs> to see what the numbers do this year mm -hmm. talk a little more about it because i was wondering about the transportation of trying to get east and central yeah. over is there any kind of beta or t caps that are like really a t caps from that as you know i mean we struggle with having enough drivers in that element and i think beta is definitely you know a conversation um I think you have to have a willingness maybe of parents to have the students on their own, you know, especially those younger, younger ages. Um, but we'll continue to look at, you know, those elements and, um, you know, I am still not um, giving up on the thought of another one of these over at East Middle School at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we but, can talk about know, that at the Yeah, time. you know, I mean, some opportunities of grant funding come, I think. You know, but learn kind of what we're doing now with this and that element. Um, but it's often such a struggle, you know, to get kids from one side of the town to the other. And those mm -hmm. elements, I mean, we, uh, um, if it weren't really for the ISD that runs that transportation, you know, kind of program and helps us with funding and stuff for transportation for both of our high schools to go to the Career Tech Center, you know, that would be a struggle. So, yeah. um, but we talked a little bit at East last year when I was at the lead there about a no weekly shuttle <clears throat> trying to get together some ideas about the, the best one of the best play things about the this center is right it just removes all barriers right which is nice especially for the students at West Mills that where they just literally get a phone call they sign out they go over and, and they and they get medical all their medical needs met right. so just yesterday I was in a parent meeting and referred them to this because that sliding financial scale Everybody's eligible. Right? Mm -hmm. There is no issue. Do you have insurance? No. Do you have Medicaid? I don't know. I can't get my kid there. So all those barriers are removed when the kid is in the building and literally walks there and gets the services they need. So 
And We've been brainstorming. I met with Heidi and uh, Stacy a little bit about what it looks like at East and kind of any idea of. I think we, we you went move forward with like the social work piece over at East this yeah, year. We about that so they do have that mental health component mm -hmm. on top oh, of what, what we offer at the school. But you know, building onto that on the East side would be great. It is nice that some of our East side students right are right across division. You know, Bay Hill. Mm -hmm. A lot of those um, the housing there is actually East side, so mm -hmm. they do have the opportunity where they're pretty close. But we still have like. You know, supply road and all those that are, are right out. well and i will say too at central we tapped into it for the telehealth part portion um especially that was super super helpful we actually had a few students who were in crisis and didn't speak english and you guys were awesome we got them hooked up with some of the health support that had the translation involved and then it kind of then snowballed into some medical help that had the translation involved hmm. so i think it is making our administrators and our families aware of that telehealth component because that actually can be great and can diagnose and help support kids and families with a whole wide range. You're exactly right. Like you can actually do some basic diagnosis and, and support medically through that telehealth too. So, um, yeah, like especially when they're sitting in your growth. office looking right at you yeah. and you're like, let me ring and see if we can get the provider on a call, which right now there's lots of spaces to get people in yes. <laughs> for the medical <laughs> side. So that's great. Can I come by after the meeting and get my COVID and flu vaccinations? You can come to our clinic okay. clinic, but not to the school clinic. Right. Okay. And I'll tell you, let me... I missed my appointment at Meyer. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't you, Dr. Van Wagner, the, the um, school district that you worked at before also took care of teachers. Yeah. Um, and we did not choose to do that with this one. Not right now. How we would do it, if we did do it, it would be the post time or certain times that we would allow for teachers of the district sure. to come through. And we did explore it a little bit. Um, I know, you you know, it, there's a lot of benefits, especially during the school day. The teachers got like sore throat all of a sudden. They got to go home or not go home or whatever. I think there's lots of benefits with it. But we want to try to figure out this first part. Sure. Hindsight strep test. Mm. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Do you want to talk about the marketing, or do you want to you want to yeah. move to the next one? Well, no, just to kind of the boost the awareness. Um, me personally, I started um, in this area in March, and so even seeing the awareness spread throughout the community, and um, here's some examples just so you have a little view. It's a really uh, great snapshot of the providers, the services we do. Very quick reference tool that uh, we can provide anybody at any point in time, and then. We've also done some different outreach throughout the summer. I mean, we might have, we tagged with the you know the bus, the sunshine bus around, and that was great getting our getting our name out there and showing that connection that we're partnering versus you know two separate entities where actually we represent one you know, and so that was a great benefit. And then as well, I want to add something in that picture. You can see um, the school bus, and then you'll see our medical mobile unit which there is conversations that I'm trying to have with the state to say, why can't I put my medical provider that works at the, at the school-based health center on that medical unit and drive it over town? Mm -hmm. They are all about bricks and mortar. And so it, it's like, but school systems don't work off of bricks and mortar. And so that is a dialogue that's happening. It may take us a few years. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get the need, but there's more than just this school-based health center that wants that, right? There's several of the, you know, there's there's a lot of these in the state of Michigan. But that's how we would make that happen is put a provider on that. We also talked about that for the um, dental screenings because we have dental services. So I think there's nothing but opportunity. It's just you got to work through some of the barriers that we have and that are set up in order to break them down to get further. And so one thing that I've noticed, true, we, we attended most of all the welcome back events. Uh, so you've probably seen some of us or all of us at these events, which was a great awareness to all the staff, the I'm sorry, staff, parents, everybody. And it really was like an aha. They were connecting the things that they have been hearing about and now physically seeing us. And now we're, we're, we're trying to be as present out there as much, you know, to answer the any questions and concerns. So we're always looking for ideas to come to us to join events um, because both Hannah, the um, physician assistant, as well as Erica, the behavioral health right now, we're all trying to get that awareness out and bring be more present to the schools. 
So that is our goal. And it's been really, I mean, I've also seen the uptake just in the short time, you know, starting with the school. As soon as the first day of school, it was like, oh, we're here. And so our phones, you saw the uptake really quick. Sports physicals, you know, we were available for those that couldn't get in to their um, medical providers where we were able to handle the sports physicals and give it back to the medical provider, you know, have the access to the school. And so it was just a really good kind of win-win seeing it in progress. And I think our our goal is to keep on going with this and ideas. And so we're always welcoming feedback and, um, you know, together as a team, we can conquer all these barriers that we're trying to resolve for these students. We do um, lunch buddies at West Middle School, which my, um, my maybe you guys would appreciate this, I'm not sure, but um, the, the, my medical provider, she says, well, it's like being the new student every day going <laughs> to <laughs> that lunchroom and seeing all these middle school. So, you know, there's eventually, hopefully, build some relationships there. Um, again, you're taking a bunch of health professionals into a school <laughs> setting, so we're pretty vulnerable, And um, but I, I think they're doing a great job in, in trying to navigate those waters. We also sit a lot at the West Middle School, all the conferences, um, all the, like, in enrollment things we were at for all the schools and many of the schools do it at the same time. I think there's a real opportunity with the Montessori school in trying to figure out how to get those kids um, tapped in and those families tapped into us a little bit more. Um, I think that there it would be nice from a security standpoint to remove some of the challenges at West Middle School for moving kids from the one building to the next. I, I haven't even presented this yet to anyone at TCAPS, so it's probably not appropriate, but it'd be cool to have a tunnel so that there was that security risk was was removed because that's the biggest deal is because they got to walk outside, right? And so now we're moving kids back and forth. And how do we remove that barrier so that more kids can be um, advocating for themselves if they need to go talk to a therapist or they need that chill out room or they just need a space to like figure out what this thing is on their arm, right? So um, I, I think that empowerment and advocate for themselves is um, really key. Um, and I think just partnering up with this back to school or your, your track event um, is a great opportunity for us to just give back, right? So trying to honor the teachers, honor to the staff that like, hey, we're here to actually be one of your resources and that you don't have to do it by yourselves. Um, and if we got someone or some buddies, we'll, we'll be there. Um, <clears throat> we did get an infrastructure award for the TCAP Student Health Center, so we got all that money, which is awesome. We built the place, and then we have 180 to keep us moving, which pays for the staffing. Um, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of extra. It's pretty lean. And but we got some infrastructure money, so we are going to do some improvements. So what you'll see is that um, when you walk, I wish I had a photo of this. Um, but when you walk up at the school-based health center, there's these steps, and this winter uh, proved to be um, not great. Lots of salt, lots of shoveling. So we're going to put an awning over it to the room, so just a little bit more protection of winter. Um, we have um, we're going to redo the doors and like the entrances because they're all the original ones that TCAPS had, in hopes that maybe we can expand. Um, again, <laughs> probably not appropriate for me to say it here, but that would be the hope that we can like if we got enough students of this district that. Want our services and the families are loving it. I would love to have that conversation. Um, we're going to build out some windows. So we didn't originally put any windows in it because we didn't really have the money. But with the infrastructure money, we can put a kind of a nice window in it, get some fresh sunlight in there um, to help it out. And those are some of the main things I think that we're going to do uh, for the infrastructure. And those are the four areas that we could use the funds for. So um, also, I think I think we have some security measures. Although I will say that. Um, the, the the team that did uh, the blue light and all the things that y'all do that we had to learn um, was really easy to work with and really helpful. So thank you to the school district for all that support that we were given um, for our phone system and our security system mm -hmm. and um, our shoveling system. So it's been a it's been a fun year. We figured out who to call for sure. <laughs> it's a couple speed dial people. Um, again, this is a contact us if you have the slides and be able to catch us. Um, so what's next? Okay, so now we're going to East Middle School. We already got the grant. We have one, we have a room off the library 
Um, and we'll have a behavioral health therapist also there five days a week supporting the kids at East Middle School. Again, it's a Michigan Department of Health and Human Services grant that says specifically go with the East Middle School kids first, but we know Cherry Knoll is right there. We know that if there's more opportunity and more access, we will provide it. Um, we are still looking for a therapist. We still have our job posting, so it's a matter of when we hire to put them in because the room is pretty much all yeah, that's done. Okay. Yeah, we cleaned it up, and thank you, um, uh, Dan, for helping us initiate that this summer. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's ready whenever we get a therapist. So, and it is year round, so it's not a school district. Type. It's not. A, it doesn't follow the school calendar. That's the uniqueness: is that neither one of these clinics run like a school calendar. They're year round. But I've been. I know that a lot of people take their PTO during the time that the school's out because it's so quiet, especially between uh, the holidays. So thank you. Um, I I, I want to. I really do want to honor the TCAP staff for supporting this and making the first six eight months wonderful. Um, it's been fun, and, um, and it's been really supportive. And so the team at TCAPS has been incredibly supportive to us and helped us navigate the area that we weren't really overly familiar with. So thank you. Any questions? I think I'm good. Thank you so much. Uh, I would I would like to just say um, for TCAPS to just keep trying to promote and communicate that that we have this wonderful resource. Um, you know that that our all of our buildings, you know, be it our elementary buildings or you know uh, secondary buildings, that that we keep pushing this resource um, in every way because it is such a great thing. And, and like you said, even going to that welcome um, welcome back day at the track and having some staff say, oh my gosh, yeah, you know, it's, I think we need to do a better job of even pushing that communication because it is so good. Um, and like you said, that sliding scale, no one's going to get turned away, which no is, um, you know, that's, yeah something to be said about that so. absolutely and, and those that qualify we help them with that so we help them with all their paperwork and figuring this out um, I would be remiss if I didn't share who the first patient was of the clinic um, he was a high schooler a junior that had um, well, I think a pink eye it was my kid. And I'm like, go try it out. And so we drove over there. And um, <laughs> anyways, it, it's just fun. It's fun to be able to like have them figure out how to use healthcare and how to like check in, um, how to answer all the questions after, of course, I did all the heavy paperwork. So I, I wrote that down because I'm like, oh, I'm missing that slide. I've had kids there myself. I love it, right? It's so, so easy. It's have just you easy. looked at some of the other schools in the area and made them aware? Well, we can only serve T we can only serve TCAPS. Only TCAPS. Only TCAPS. Only TCAPS. Now, okay. if you're a virtual kiddo through, I don't know how that goes, but I know that there are some kiddos, especially in our Manistee area public school one, that are virtual that were virtual in 2020, and we just kept on seeing them. So, so for kids that are part of the Compass, you know, our Compass know learning program, okay. and, but they may not be within the, you know our necessarily our borders. They're still well, eligible as a TCAPS. Kids too. over at Career Tech. Or no, only, only if they're, they have to be under our school codes. Oh, okay. So, but a virtual kid that's a part of our Compass Learning Center now would be eligible. And there is a lot of need just in TCAPS alone. So we're just going to keep focusing there, keep on focusing with our middle schoolers. The other really cool thing that I always think about the middle school is that we're teaching them at 6th, 7th, and 8th to go into high school. And like now they've established how to do this. So mm -hmm. we have that really prime time to work with them and um, teach them in the teen hours. There's no little kids, they're not little kids, there's no elementary school kids. It's all just teens that are there during that time, which also allows for teens to feel comfortable, like to go that they're not going to be with, uh, you know, a kindergartner that, that has something going on too, so. Well, and on that note, with that Compass Learning Center, it might be a great opportunity for those kids because they, the virtual kids, probably are not aware of this service. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So maybe to, we'll get some to and stuff push out there, some communication sure. yeah. to them, yeah. um, you know, what a, what a great resource, too. Um, yeah. And again, transportation might be an issue, but I know there are a lot of 
gas cards and bus cards that they yeah, give out. Up from there. Yep, so that could mm -hmm. be a great opportunity. So, well, thank you so much for yeah, being here you. and um, such a great update. Uh, sorry for the lack of introduction on my no. part, <laughs> throwing you right out there. Um, but yeah, really, uh, really appreciate you being here. And it's just great uh, almost a year later to kind of hear what's going on there. So, Erica, yeah. can I say one other thing? No. Curriculum. <laughs> Just kidding. If, if you have a health, like if you have a health need, I, I know both Erica and Hannah would be super interested in going into a classroom. So mm -hmm. I have no idea how curriculum works, but, and I know it's about you know, whatever that looks like, but um, I know they're always looking for opportunities. So. Yeah, communicable disease, I would think. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially right now, because you've got a, an interesting flare. This is unusual. This pertussis is mm -hmm. concerning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank we you. have it right now planned for, I believe, for Katie to come back for our board meeting. Correct? I have it on my calendar. Yep. Please. So is that okay. something the committee thinks would be good for the whole board or yeah. do you think at this point that we've had what's your, your thoughts I mean I think gosh I mean I think you know a lot of our board members watch committee meetings um, so I think but I think even more so for our community I think more of our community watches our regular board member meetings versus our committee meetings and I think the information you've shared is is great to push out to the community um, I mean, as well as our board, too. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I, if, if you guys are open to coming to the board meeting, I think it... Sure. Um, can I adjust some of my slides? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It, it doesn't have to be same, same, right? No. no. Okay, same content. Yeah. Just a couple of slides I'm not yeah. crazy about. Yeah, and again, the <laughs> message, <laughs> you know, the community that's watching okay. and listening, I think, is, is good, okay. too, to kind of target that, um, that resource that we have. So, um, yeah, okay, great. Um, all right, then we will move on to celebrations and successes. Yeah, celebrations and successes. So we'll kick it off at some elementary schools um, <clears throat> here at Blair. A lot of, uh, obviously, every school has um, a system for their PBIS. And here at Blair, uh, they do their Monday morning meeting with, with the, entire, uh, the entire group there for students. And it's ran by fifth graders. So you have that idea of students kind of empowering leadership. Um, Cherry Knoll has their Deputy McKenzie from East Bay Township. I worked with her quite a bit when I was at um, East Middle School. She comes, looks like she's coming in uh, on a monthly basis just to talk to students about rights and responsibilities and how their interactions can impact them in and out of school. Uh, Cortade, we, we talked about Constitution Day. Specifically, here's a picture of them around their flagpole. Their fifth graders uh, led them in the National Anthem on Constitution Day and the Pledge of Allegiance just reinforcing, reinforcing an idea of unity and patriotism. Uh, Long Lake, again, around that idea of PBIS, here's Kate Berwinkle participating in one of their circle times that they have uh, to start off their classes. Uh, TCAP's Montessori uh, rallying around their peace poll there for their International Day of Peace celebration. And here at Traverse Heights, a, a couple of celebrations here. One, looking at their MSTEP that has come in, they've seen an almost 12% gain um, in their reading MSTEP over the past uh, year or so. Um, so that's something to definitely celebrate. And then also they have their point system there with their houses, if you're familiar. So they kind of break it up like the Harry Potter way and then each house gets points for various. It's kind of their PBIS system for behavior. Great um, Lakes way. Great Lakes. Uh, Ontario. Yep. I was just going to say, I know there's some members here. So. Yeah. Yep. And we actually, there's an invite uh, we just yes. received Brian, for yes. those that haven't been. Have you been I have sorted? not yet because last year you came late to it, so I thought I'll let Erica get on the board and then I'll get on the board. <laughs> no, no. I mean, the, have you been sorted at Traverse Heights? I don't think I have. Okay. That's what, uh, to so when new That's kids new come one? into Traverse Heights or the kindergartners, um, they get sorted. So the sorting ceremony, uh, Brian K. just sent out an invitation to board members. Have you been sorted? 
<laughs> yeah. I'm not that I'm aware of. Okay, it's cool. It's really a cool thing. So um, you get a hat. I would imagine that. you. Well, the the, the, the more so the hat. kids, the kids, the kids get you know. But you know they make it's fun because the we got sorted too. The adults, the new adults, get sorted into a house. So I look forward to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, okay. We may just be unsortable. Maybe. <laughs> I have not been sorted. <laughs> See that? There's no I would go one. to Superior. Don't put me in Erie and Ontario. Those barely count. They're so shallow. So That's right. Just... It has to be Michigan. I am Ontario. Are you? I am Ontario. Yes, I was sorted so in Ontario. So, they are shallow. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Sorry. Uh, House Assembly, just as a highlight here, the community is involved in that when they, ha when they have that uh, assembly. So over 40 parents and caregivers uh, were, were part of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Secondary. and on to the secondaries. It's hard to believe we're in week six of the school year already. So last week, uh, Central High School had their homecoming week, concluded with the game on Friday and their dance with over a thousand students on Saturday night um, cool. in an outdoor tent. So try not to you know, mitigate spreads of things. So that's nice. Uh, West is kicking off their homecoming week this week with their home game on Friday and their dance on Saturday. And sort of here on the eve of the fall PSAT is tomorrow for all of our 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. And this PSAT is what qualifies our 11th grade students for the National Merit um, Scholarship. So you saw Central students who qualified there. I think there were three. And then here are the West students. Um, these are seniors who qualified as juniors through their PSAT. Um, so that's tomorrow for both of our high schools there. Um, and then it's always fun in the fall. We shook a lot of hands. <laughs> I think Eric and I uh, broke a record on that one. Um, but at all four of our secondaries, uh, we honor the academic achievements of the prior years. And each of them sort of do a, a nice uh, community unique twist on, on how they honor those and what those awards look like. Awards are consistent throughout four, all four of those secondaries. So we're able to attend those, um, and that's a great way just to celebrate all of the academic achievement our, our, our kids are doing, so mm, good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Lots of good celebrations and, um, yeah, good good, uh, good report out on the celebrations. That's fun. Um, anything else anyone wants to add here today? No, okay. Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, our next board curriculum committee meeting is uh, October 29th uh, at 8.30 here in this room. And with that, I will adjourn the meeting. So thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks for being here. Truly appreciate it. Thank so. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.